Hi, my name is Tyler Stallings. I'm the director at the Frank M. Doyle Arts Pavilion at Orange Coast College. And I'm also the curator for the uh, survey exhibition of John Upton's work, Right Place, Right Time. I'm especially excited about this exhibition because it'll be one of the largest um, uh, presentations of John's own individual artwork as a um, fine art photographer. And I say that because in, I think he's mainly known as, for his educational impact that he made in uh, photography. My name is John Upton and I am a professor emeritus from Orange Coast College. I taught here from oh, 1966 until uh, 1999. When I was in high school, I had seen the work of Ansel Adams and Edward Weston, and it was very attractive to me. And my father was a newspaper publisher, and I worked at the uh, plant's office in the dark room to help out during the summer. I was only like 14 years old at the time. During that time, I became more and more interested in photography. And then when I was 18 years old and about ready to graduate from high school, I decided I would like to meet Ansel Adams. So in those days, there were no answering machines. I could just call his phone number, which you could get from the operator. And he said, well, yes, come up and, and talk to me. And of course, I lived in the San Fernando Valley, so I had to drive to San Francisco. And I brought along some photographs I'd made of Yosemite and he liked them. And he said, I'd like you to beat Minor White. So I met Minor and said that I, you know, wanted to enroll in the California School of Fine Arts. Now this was a program in photography or at the school, there was a program of photography that Ansel had founded many years before in 1946. So Miner said, well, yes, but I'd prefer you have a couple of years of college before you come here. And of course, being 19 years old at the time, uh, I said, uh, oh, okay. And I enrolled in the, in the school immediately. And it was a unique situation at the time. Uh, Miner was teaching. Uh, we went to Edward Weston's house in Carmel and looked at his prints and he talked with us. Uh, Imogen Cunningham, as I mentioned, uh, Dorothea Lang Ansel, Edward Weston. These are all people that were part of the faculty of the college. And so uh, I was there from 1952 uh, till 1953. And what happened is in the fall of 1953, I got drafted into the army. But I'd had a, a little more than a year of working with these instructors. I was a commercial photographer at the time, and I had a studio in La Habra and another studio on Balboa Island. And I had been urged by both Ansel Adams and Minor White to teach photography. And I was not a businessman, but nevertheless, I had two children, etc and I had to make money, so that's what I did. And one day I went to Balboa Island uh, to pick up some equipment, uh, and I discovered that one of my employees uh, had been taking money from the, the studio, uh, which made me annoyed. So then I drove back to La Habra, but in the process I got lost, and I ended up on Fairview and I was driving along and I saw this sign that said Orange Coast College. And I thought to myself, because I was so annoyed with what had happened, I thought, I wonder if they teach photography there. So I pulled off the street and went into the administration building and they said, yes, Arthur Evans teaches photography here and he's here today. So I went back to see him. It turned out that he actually knew something about me, we had mutual friends. And he said, would you like to teach? And I, before I, he could complete the sentence, I said, yes. And so that's how I started teaching. Uh, first class was fall of 1963. 
John's photography, I think, is really uh, unique, but also kind of relives, if you would, the history of photography. Uh, he started out, as many of the photographers did, looking at uh, pictorial work, uh, later becoming more influenced of a straight photography, and then really uh, expanding to that straight photography to more documentary uh, work, perhaps with some of his Japanese work. And then finally, I think it all comes together in his most recent Jungle Road uh, f photography work that he has. It turned out that I was the only one in California teaching the history of photography at that point. And, uh, but then um, I was writing so many uh, papers for students about how to do this and how to do that, etc. So I thought, well, there needs to be a textbook. And I was actually approached by two different publishers who wanted to know if I would, you know, consider doing a textbook. So I started working on the text. I went to New York. Uh, the publisher was owned by Time Life. They were very open and said, please feel free to use any photographs that we have in the Time Life library, which was an extraordinary body of work. So using those photographs, borrowing other photographs, I finally put a textbook together. And it took, uh, it started in uh, 1973, and the book was published in 1976. The photo book, I didn't really, you know, in John in general, I mean, to be honest with you, the, though I was using the textbook, I had no idea how sort of popular that textbook was. And to be honest with you, I had really no idea how well known John was for the first 10 years we were friends. I mean, it wasn't until we sort of became more colleagues, I was teaching here, he was teaching here at the same time, and he would, you know, I'd go to the, the Society for Photographic Education with him, and it's sort of like, oh, John's here, you know, you could hear sort of buzzing, people would say to me, you know, that's John Upton over there, and I said, yeah, I know, I, I share a room with him, I listen to him snore all night, yeah, I know who that is. And, and it wasn't until then that I sort of realized how, how much of an impact he had in, in the world of photography. What I was concerned about was what my prints look like at the end. How they got that way didn't make too much difference to me. It's how it looked at the end. And so, uh, I had no problem making the transition to digital in my own work. And it, it wasn't, I, I know many photographers feel that they can't do that, that they're still, the process it's still, itself is still very important to them. For me, the process is less important than the object that's on the wall. He knew after he retired, he wanted to be doing more shooting and things like that. And so I just, I just felt like I was just, I'd be along for the ride and be the enabler. But I'd always been, already been practicing this with Jerry, with Jerry Birchfield and even Mark, Mark Chamberlain. So uh, the, making the transition with, with Upton was, was a natural because it was great to work with him. Because the thing with John was every time he would walk in and we start working on, on prints, it would all of a sudden become this, like, let me tell you the story about Ansel. Let me tell you the story about Miner. Let me tell you the story about Robert Heineken. It would end up being a little bit of photography, a little bit of artwork, and then about another 45 minutes of uh, the history of photography as told by uh, uh, John Upton. And those are really treasures. Those are treasure moments. In the Japanese uh, work, uh, as I say, I was influenced by the woodblock prints, the Japanese woodblock prints. And uh, so that work uh, really extended my own feelings about Japan because I spent a good deal of time in Japan. And I lived in a Zen temple in Kyoto uh, off and on during the summers when I was vacationing from teaching here at Orange Coast, and uh, I developed a number of friendships at the time, and I became very much interested in uh, Japanese culture and philosophy, uh, and that sort of shaped the direction my photography took. 
at the time. I photographed uh, in Buddhist temples to some extent and Japanese landscape, which still fascinates me a great deal. Uh, I photographed. I also did street work, which normally I don't in, uh, do in this country, but I do a great deal of uh, street work in Japan. When I did the Jungle Road, or started the Jungle Road process, which was about, oh, 14 years ago now, and um, I immediately uh, started working in a very dense tropical rainforest area. And I was absolutely fascinated with it. Um, I think part of the reason was I've, I've tried to, to understand where my interest came from. And when I was a child, I used to see Tarzan movies. And I think that the, the Tarzan films uh, developed a, a kind of fascination in me for uh, tropical rainforests. So uh, I found this area north of Hilo and began to photograph there. And then as I was working there, I began to realize that the, this jungle appearance also continued down the road to the volcano to the south. And so the, um, the Jungle Road series then became about, became about the transition of the dense tropical rainforest to the volcano. In other words, the shift of energy from plant life to the, the energy coming from the earth. And so, uh, and the two photographs behind me uh, are really, one is on, uh, you know, is in the, the tropical area and the other, of course, is the volcano. I like the idea of being able to see the work in that form. I remember one of Miner's teachings was that the walls of your house are your laboratory. And the idea of being able to see my work starting from my you know, earliest work at the California School of Fine Arts up to the present day is, a, I, I think, a very delightful idea. I'm looking forward to it.